Hello and welcome to this video on finding the probability of successive dependent events. Now in the previous video we looked at independent events. So let's just say we want to define the probability of getting two heads after we've thrown a fair coin twice. So we want the probability of getting a heads on the first throw and a heads on the second throw. Well what's the probability of getting heads on the first throw? Well it's just a half. Now, what's the probability of getting heads on the second throw? Well, it's still a half. The coin has no memory. Whether we get heads or tails on the second coin is not influenced by the first coin. And do you remember, when we had the word and, it meant that we could multiply the two probabilities together. So the probability of the first coin is heads and the second coin is heads is just a half times half. We multiply the two probabilities and we get a quarter. Now there are some occasions where the events do influence each other. So let's take this example here. We've got four red and five green sweets in a bag. You take the sweet at random and then eat it. And then when you eat the sweet, that changes the number of sweets that's left in the bag. So let's just say we're trying to find the probability that the second sweet is red. Can you see that that probability would be different if you initially ate a red sweet on the first sweet or you initially ate a green sweet? Because if you initially ate a red sweet, there'll be less red sweets in the bag and therefore the probability of then eating a red sweet on the second sweet will be lower. And we'll be able to see this when we form a probability tree. So let's do the same as we did in the previous video. So we've got a pick, let's write that at the top, the first pick, and that first pick could have been red or green. So red, R for red, G for green. And then we've got the second pick, and that again could be red, or green and it could be red or green if we picked the first one as green. Now let's work out these probabilities. The probability the first one is red, well there's nine sweets in total and four of them are red so it would just be four ninths and there's five green so it would be five ninths probability that the first pick is green. What about the second pick? Now this second pick of red here depends on the first pick being red. So we've picked a red sweet. Now let's consider how many sweets we have left. We've eaten a red sweet, so we now have three red left and five green. That's eight sweets left, of which three are red. So it's three out of eight. And of those eight sweets left, we've, got five, we've still got five green left, so it's five out of eight. Now what about here? What's the probability of getting a red sweet on the second pick given that the first pick was green? Now if we initiate a green sweet, there would now be there would still be four red left, but four green left as well, and therefore out of the eight sweets, four out of the eight are red, and four of the eight are green. And you might think, oh, can't we simplify that to a half? Uh, and the only reason I'm not is to have consistency of these denominators here. And as you can see, look, the probability of red on the second pick was different depending on wh whether we initially picked a red sweet or a green sweet on the first pick. So let's do B. We want to determine the probability that both sweets are red. Now we can do exactly the same as we did in the first video. We want the probability that the first sweet is red and the second sweet is red. Now I've used the word and, so that means we can multiply the probabilities. So it's probably the first one is red, four ninths, times the probability the second one is red, it's three eighths. But we want to use the correct part of the tree. So we can see we went along this part of the tree. The first one was red, and then the second one was red, given that the first was red. What about the second part, I, I? The probability the sweets were the same color. So this time, it could be in the probability that they're both red, that would be the same colour, or both green. So let's write red, red, or green, green. Do you remember that when we have an or, it means we add the probabilities together. So what's the probability the first one was red and the second one was red? Well, we already worked out earlier, that was 12 over 72. So let's put 12 over 72. And then because it's or, we're going to add, and then it's the probability the first one is green and the second one is green. We can see we've got five ninths times four eighths. And then let's just simplify that on the calculator. And we get a probability of four ninths. And then thirdly, we've got the probability the sweets were of different colors. So, again, we want to find the matching possibilities. Well, it could be, they're different colors. It could have been the first one was red and the second one was green or it could have been the first was green and the second was red. So we can go across like this, 
or we can go across like this, a green and then red. So let's first work out the property. The first one was red and the second one was green. That's 4 ninths times 5 eighths. Or, and remember we add, it could have been green and red. So it's 5 ninths times 4 eighths. And then if we do that calculation, we get 5 ninths. And to be honest, we could have worked this out from the previous answer because if they're not both the same colour, then they must be different colours. So we could have done 1 minus our answer there, where they're the same colour, 4 ninths. 1 minus 4 ninths would be 5 ninths. So we could have got that more quickly. Right, let's do question 2. I have 8 £1 coins and 2 50p coins. I take 3 coins at random. What's the probability I have £2.50? I advise trying to avoid doing the tree. Now, in some exam questions, you're given the tree and you have to sort of fill in the probabilities. But if you can avoid doing a tree when you're not given one, I, I highly recommend that. And just list out the possibilities that you want. So if you have eight £1 coins and two fifty coins, you take three coins and you get £2.50. Well, think of all the possibilities in which we'd get £2.50. What could the three coins be? Well, it could be that the first coin was £1, the second coin was £1, and the third coin was 50p. And we're going to work out the property of that. I tend to put a colon after each possibility that I list. What else could have happened? Well, it could have been the first coin was £1, the second coin was 50p, and the third coin was £1. And notice here, by the way, we, we're concerned about the order. We're seeing what the first coin is, the second coin is, and the third coin is in that particular order. And the last possibility is that the first coin could have been 50p, the second coin £1, and the third coin £1. And now we've got our three possibilities, we can work out the property of each. So what's the probability the first coin was £1 and the second coin was £1 and the third coin was 50p? Well, the probability the first one was £1. Well, 8 out of the 10 coins were £1, so it's 8 tenths times, because we said and. The second one is £1. Well, if you think about it, we now have one less coin overall, so we're now picking out of only 9 coins, because we've now got that £1 in our hand, haven't we? And how many £1 coins we got left? Well, we had eight, but now we've got seven. So you can see that the denominator has gone down one, but also the numerator has gone down by one. And then finally, what's the probability the last coin is 50p? Well, we've got two coins in our hand now, so we have eight coins left, so it's out of eight, and two of those are 50p. So we've got times that, and we'll work that out in a second. What about the second one? The probability of the first one is £1 is eight tenths again. The probability the second one is 50p, well, we've got nine coins left, but two of them are 50p. And then finally, what's the probability the last one is one pound, where well, we've got eight coins left. Now, we've already got a one pound coin in our hand, so we've got one less pound coin, so it's going to be seven eighths. And then finally, this one is just going to be two tenths times eight ninths times seven eighths. Now, let's work these out. We get seven over 45. Now, can you see that actually with these other ones, we've got the same numerators in each case, but just in a different order, and the same denominators. So we must get the same fraction when we multiply them together. So we're going to get 7 over 45 in all three cases. And that, in general, is always true. If you just have the same outcomes, but in a different order, you'll end up with the same probability. So you could just work out the first one, and then you know because you've got three outcomes, you can times that by three. And remember, it was that possibility, or that possibility, or that possibility, so we can add those together, and that gives us a grand total of 7 over 15. And that is the answer. Now we've got this last one, which is an algebraic one, and one of these famously came up um, a few years ago involving Hannah and her sweets, and it caused somewhat of an outcry because no one had seen um, an example like this for a long time. But they have come up before. Um, I spotted one on a GCSE paper from about 10 years ago, and they regularly come up in the IGCSE. So let's try it. We have n sweets of which four are red. I take two sweets. The probability that both are red is two sevenths. We've got to show that n squared minus n minus 42 equals. The first thing to note is that when it says show that, it doesn't mean solve that equation. And that's what a lot of students did. They just solve that equation. What show that means is that you've got to somehow use the information provided to somehow generate this equation. Using exactly the same techniques as we've used for the previous problems in this video. So what we usually do to find the probability that they're both red? Well, we've got only one possibility there. The probability of the first one is red and the second one is red. 
So, what's the probability that the first suite is red? Well, four are red out of n suites, so it's four over n. Don't be upset by the fact that we've got a variable there rather than a number. The maths is still exactly the same. And then times, because the property of the first is red and the second is red. Well, what's the property of the second is red? Well, if you think about it, we have one less sweet overall rule because we've got that red sweet in our hand. So what's one less than n? Well, it's n minus one, isn't it? And then, and how many red sweets have we got left? Well, there's three left because there were four, but we've got one in our hand. So there's now three left. And we're told that that probability is two-sevenths. We can say that's equal to two-sevenths. And now can you see that we've got an equation now, so we somehow have to get from that equation to this simplified form here. Now, firstly, I see a multiplication of two fractions, so I'd want to put them together. So if we do that, four times three is 12, over n times n minus one. You could write n brackets n minus one. So you'll have n times n, which is n squared, and n times minus 1, which is minus n, and that's equal to 2 sevenths. Now, whenever you see an equation where you have a fraction on both sides of the equation and nothing else, then you can use something called cross multiplication. The way you do that is you do this times this is equal to that times that. And can you see that we get a cross here? So we do 12 times 7, which is 84, is equal to 2 times n squared minus n. So I just write that with a bracket. So 12 times 7, 84, is equal to 2 times n squared minus n, which is this here. So if we just expand that out, we get 84 equals 2n squared minus 2n. Now we could divide both sides by 2 because everything has a factor of 2. So we get 42 equals n squared minus n. And we're nearly there. All we need to do now is we want 0 on both sides. So if we subtract 42 from both sides, we get the desired equation. So we get n squared minus n minus 42 is equal to zero. And then this very last part of the question, hence determine the number of sweets. Well, the number of sweets is n, so we just need to solve this equation. So if you've seen the video on quadratic equations, solving them, or you've done it before in class, so let's do this. So we've got n squared minus n minus 42 equals zero. We need two numbers that add to give minus 1, there's implicitly a, a 1 there, and times to give negative 42. So let's think, what numbers multiply to give 42? Well, 6 and 7 do. Oh, and 1 has to be negative to get a negative number as the product, so it can be 6 and minus 7. So we factorise out of this, n plus 6 and n minus 7 is equal to 0. And that means, well, we've got a product of two things equal to 0, so either the first thing 0, if n plus 6 is 0, n is minus 6, or n minus 7 is 0, so n is 7. Now, the number of sweets is n. We can't have a negative number of sweets, so let's put a strike through that. I would write the answer there, but I'd put a strike through it. So therefore, we must have had seven sweets, so there are seven sweets.